The social and political environment at Wilson from 1965 to 1969 was very mixed. It changed pretty dramatically over the four years I was there. When I entered in 1965, Wilson had required chapel, convocation, dressing for dinner and for classes, no pants allowed, and we had to dress similarly, no pants, to go downtown. Socially, the women's movement was just beginning to become a more common and acceptable topic of discussion and influence. When we began college, the assumption for women's careers was either as a wife and mother, or teacher, nurse, secretary, or social worker. When I graduated in 1969, a number of my classmates went into banking or investment finance management as those industries were desperately seeking women as employees. Many went on to graduate school and a substantial number pursued professional degrees in law and medicine, again, largely unheard of previously. When we came out, we were beginning to see where the feminist movement was taking us and could take us. I think the background that we were given at Wilson gave us the knowledge that we could forge ahead in those directions. Um, and my mother started it by telling me when I was a kid I could be anything I wanted to be. And you come to a place like Wilson and you see people who can be what they want to be. The four major movements at the time women's liberation, as it was called, civil rights, anti-poverty programs, and the protest against the war in Vietnam attracted different levels of intensity and engagement. And they attracted different constituencies, although there was significant overlap. All mattered a great deal to some, but the notion of freeing women from routine and traditional roles cut across many groups. While those of us protesting the war or becoming and or remaining active in civil rights activities were smaller groups. The country was very engaged in civil rights and voting rights debates and activities. When there were an increased number of African American women admitted to Wilson, maybe five or six in my class. The change in demographic visually was noticeable. As subsequent classes were admitted, the racial makeup of Wilson began to shift marginally. The African American students were active and vocal in student movements, especially civil and voting rights, and gained increasing voice between 1965 and 1969. I was in the bathtub on the third floor of McElwain, and there were three students in the um, sink area, and I splashed really loud to let them know somebody was in there, and I heard a very interesting discussion from the point of view of three of our black students about uh, social things, uh, dating, and issues of how people were treated, and I think that was very enlightening. Not the most comfortable experience. <laughs> <laughs> Racial issues were quite important. I took a black studies course that was invaluable. My black friends were organized and angry. I fought to have a black student included in Candle Club. I had a number of black students, and so they were a very distinct minority on campus, and um, they felt sometimes and it culminated at my senior year when we had a sit out in front of um, is it Warfield? Warfield. Warfield. And you know, I'm coming along and it's like, okay, why are we all sitting here? And so I sat down by my friend Susan McNeil and I said, so tell me why I'm sitting here now. <laughs> What's going on? And apparently um, the business manager had dealings and many of the students felt very insulted by the requests and the attitude and this was a protest. I also recall sitting outside Warfield with many other students in protests led by African American students who wanted a campus-wide discussion and deliberation about civil rights after the murder of Martin Luther King Jr. After Martin Luther King was killed, there was an assembly that most of the college took place in in remembrance of him and Thompson. 
I was very aware of the Civil Rights Movement. This was a carryover from my high school and home location of the Washington, D.C. area. We were, however, still a very white and repressed society. I recall one friend whose roommate would not room with her because my friend was black. This happened on the first day of being at Wilson. I think there was awareness of what was going on, but the focus on campus was here. What are we doing here? There were some off-campus activities that I did not participate in, um, social things, but um, I think the year after we graduated, when uh, Walter Cronkite was speaking, we didn't get a good graduation speaker in 69. That year there was a um, protest at graduation um, with, <laughs> it was very, with dignity and decorum, and maybe Eisenhower was here. Um, and they were protesting some of the political issues, specifically the war. And um, we actually made national coverage. And like, they carried their signs in, they put them down, and were ready to graduate. Because I had a car, and because one of our classmates was from Washington, D.C., and her father opened his home to us, there were several of us who went frequently to D.C. to protest the war in Vietnam. This was an informal group, not organized by or through the college, but something we undertook on our own. No one of these protests was significant to change the U.S. government's policies, but along with many other protests and activism in political affairs within the political parties, not to mention a totally failed military policy and set of practices, eventually support for the U.S. engagement weakened and ultimately caused a dramatic change in U.S. involvement. My perspective was anything that rips a country apart is not a good thing, and it was ripping our country apart. Um, in the years after leaving Wilson uh, and some of the experiences with returning vets and stuff, just peripheral experiences, it, it was clearly um, a very dramatic experience for the country as a whole. Many of the older class were dating college men who upon graduation were drafted into the military service as officer candidates. Many were engaged to students at military academies, primarily West Point and the Naval Academy. They, in my recollection, were more supportive of the military and its actions. The war was a frequent topic of conversation and debate. I recall particularly the evening that Lyndon Johnson announced he would not run for president for another term. Citing the divided country around the war, we were both shocked and elated that our participation in the protests could have such a significant impact and effect. People working together can and did make changes for the better. Whether it was freeing up some of the restrictions and requirements regarding campus and student life, or causing the campus to conduct classes differently, to integrate into class discussion of major social events that were happening around us, we genuinely had a sense and the experience of making changes in an institution, and for some of us, in the political and societal realms. I, I think uh, politically it was because there was such a sea change in the 60s, because the baby boomers were certainly having an impact on the whole educational structure, um, that produced stress and strain within the growth of the campus. Um, and I think those movements that were in the general society certainly had their impact on how courses were developed and offered, um, but we had such a strong liberal arts um, foundation that the education was, this is the foundation, it's not the end. I went into college much like the one my mother attended 30 years earlier. President Havens was there student government chugged along. The rules were the same. Chapel was required, tradition stayed, odds even, singing, daisy chain, etc. By 1968, 
1969, that was all gone. Prexy had left. We didn't like the silly old traditions as much. The rules changed.